The following presentation is rated N for nerdy. It's time for Nerdgasm! Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and today we're gonna to be reviewing quite possibly one of the nerdiest products I've ever reviewed. Now, this was sent over to me by MassDrop.com. They're actually a group buying site that basically uses the power of the community to bring prices down. So the more people that want an item, the cheaper you get it for. And they've actually been a great company to work with, so I urge you to check them out. And currently they're doing a drop right now for the product that I'm reviewing in this video. You can check for a link in the video description and the timing for the drop. And if you you missed the drop, who knows, there might be another one in the future. Now the product they sent over to me is called The Plank. It's from a company called OLKB and it's a DIY kit for building your own ortholinear keyboard. Now they call it an ortholinear keyboard because well, all the keys are in rows. You can see they're not staggered like a traditional keyboard. They also sent me over their other kit right here, which is the Prionic. And the difference between the two is this one has 48 keys, this one has 60 keys. So depending on your need, you can get either kit. Now both of these keyboards you have to assemble yourself, but I was lucky enough to talk them into doing it for me. So they both showed up completely assembled because I wanna show you guys what I think makes these nerdy beyond just soldering them together. All right guys, stay tuned, this is gonna be fun. All right, so the first nerdy thing about both of these keyboards is that they come as a kit, which means you have to assemble it yourself. Well, unless you're me, then, then, they'll, then they'll assemble it for you. But in the event that you're not me, you have to build this keyboard from a kit. When you order either keyboard, it comes with the back plates, the front plate, and the prionic. It comes with the wood ends on it, all of the electronics inside, and you get to pick which type of switches you want. I selected the Cherry MX Blues because I love that switch, and you get to select what keycaps you want. Now, I kind of wish in hindsight that I had have ordered the kit and assembled myself because I thought it was going to be incredibly complicated, but it turns out you just drop the switches through a PCB and solder each pin in place. And the pins are far enough apart that you don't have to worry about over soldering or shorting things unless you just really, really suck at soldering. I mean, if you suck at soldering like so bad that you're afraid to even plug in the soldering iron, you might want to like hit up dad or an uncle or brother or something to do it. Now, once you finish assembling your keyboard, the first thing you're gonna notice is it is of an ortholinear design, which means it is a perfect grid pattern of keys and they are not staggered like a traditional keyboard. Now, the principle behind this is that when you're using the home row method, your fingers are never more than two keys away from their intended target. So you don't have to move your hands as much and it cuts down on fatigue. Now I spent a couple hours typing on this keyboard and you guys, if you're on my Twitter feed or my Instagram, you saw me posting messages that I actually typed on this keyboard. And I will tell you that the learning curve is steep. Expect that when you get this keyboard, you're not gonna just plug it in and replace your current keyboard and just be off and running with absolutely no problems. It will take time to learn the layout and get used to the non-staggered keys. But the cool thing about it is that it uses something called layers because you're probably thinking, how does a keyboard with only 48 keys replace a 104 key conventional keyboard? Well, I'm glad you asked. The idea is that you have multiple shift keys. Basically, they refer to them as layers. So you all these little keys next to the space bar. Each time you push one of these layers and hit another key, that key function changes depending on which key it is. Some of them stay the same, but all of that is configurable. And the best part about it is you get to configure it in code, yes! That is the third nerdy factor of this keyboard, the trifecta if you will, is that you get to actually go write C code and reprogram the microcontroller in this board to do anything you want. For instance, I took this keyboard right here and made every single key on it, with the exception of the one down here at the bottom, a space bar. And I did it just as a joke because now I can put the keyboard on the floor and just mash it with my foot and it's a space bar. Okay, I realize that's not that practical, but we're gonna get into that as the video progresses because I think that is what makes these keyboards truly unique is that they come programmed as a keyboard with an open source firmware that's available on GitHub, and I have links in the video description, and the forked firmware, which also allows you to turn it into a MIDI controller and do a lot of really cool macroing stuff with the keyboard. But that's what makes this thing amazing, is that you get to program the controller. The thing has an ATmega 32U4 microcontroller in it, which has 32 kilobytes of memory, which is next to nothing, but you'd be surprised what you can accomplish in 32K. Now, in addition to the firmwares that are open source and available on GitHub, you can also get support on the OLKB subreddit and contribute to the projects on GitHub. So when you buy this keyboard, you're literally able to contribute to the project 
or even fork to your own project and create your own firmware for this keyboard. But guys, honestly, that's what makes this keyboard truly unique in my opinion and why I've been posting for days about it and not just doing a traditional unboxing. This has rekindled my native programming skills. Like, I actually enjoyed installing Visual Studio, opening up the key map file from the firmware, modifying the key map. I even put in my own functions for playing sound when you plug the keyboard in. Check this out. All right, so that was supposed to be the beginning of Mario Brothers, uh, or maybe Kim Possible, I don't really know. So the two most common firmwares that are deployed to this keyboard are the TMK firmware and the QMK firmware, and I'll have links to both in the video description, and QMK is an extension and a fork of the TMK firmware. So the project is actually under heavy development right now. Now, if you've never programmed before and you're not familiar with the C language, you're not SOL here, because they give you a keymap.c file that actually has some good annotations in it and they have instructions on both the subreddit and on the Git project that tell you how to modify the keywords for the keystrokes in the arrays. That way you technically don't have to write any code, you're just modifying code that's already there and it's pretty intuitive and then you have to build it. Now setting up the build environment for this was a little bit of a pain in the ass. The instructions did miss a couple things and I will have those down in the video description also in case you encounter the same problems. But for me, I'm on a Windows environment. I don't use Linux, I don't use Unix. Well actually that's not entirely true. I use them on some devices, but I don't natively use it as my desktop operating system. So in that case, I had to install something called MinGW, which is basically a minimalistic GNU environment for Windows. And I'll have a link to that also in the video description. If I forgot some of the links, let me know down in the comments, guys, because there's going to be a lot of them in this video description. All right, so once you have the minimalistic GNU environment installed, then you have to go download the firmware, either the TMK or the QMK firmware from GitHub, uncompress it to your hard drive and then run a couple of setup scripts. And those setup scripts will configure the build environment and then it's as simple as going into the folder for the keyboard that you have and typing make to build the hex file. Mural. All right, I realized that that was probably over a lot of people's heads. Even saying it, it felt a little over my head. But don't worry guys, there are step-by-step -step instructions on the GitHub project along with readmes and the support from the Reddit community. So if you get this keyboard, I'm confident that you will get the firmware built and you will be able to put the firmware on the keyboard. It's just don't get frustrated with it. It can take a little bit of time and a little trial and error. Now, if you want, you can modify the source files just using Notepad or your favorite text editor. But me, I like to use Visual Studio because it gives you a lot of color coding on the code and it also gives you some hints of where you made mistakes so that you don't compile it, find a mistake, and then have to go back and figure it out again. And it makes things a little more intuitive. And if you're comfortable with a C or C++ programming background, this is gonna seem very, very very simple from the key map file. When you look at it, you're just gonna be like, wow, this is actually insanely intuitive. Now, programming the rest of the firmware actually starts to get a little bit more complicated, and that's why they did the work for you. You can focus on just altering the functionality of the keyboard and making it like make sounds when you push buttons or assigning different layer maps or making it when you push one key and let go, it changes the whole layout of the entire keyboard. You can do things like that easily in the code without having to work the entire firmware because it does get pretty complicated. Now, if Again, if you're on a Unix-based platform or Linux or GNU, I know they're to me they're all very, very similar, but I'm, I'm required by internet law to state that they're all completely different. But in all seriousness, regardless of what platform you're on, you can actually program this keyboard. And if you screw up the code, which I did multiple times and the keyboard starts wonking out on you, it doesn't work. There is a little button on the back in a recessed hole that you can just push with something pointy. And when you push that button, it reverts it back from an HID device as a keyboard through the USB controller back to the AT Mega device that can then be seen by the firmware programmer and you can push another firmware to it. That way you don't end up bricking your device. So guys, from my perspective, the build quality on these is absolutely fantastic. The ability to be able to program every single aspect of this device. I mean, seriously, if you wanted to, you could turn the damn things into a stopwatch if you wanted to. I mean, to be honest, you could do just about anything with these, but just keep in mind that AT Mega controller is a pretty slow chip. It's over, it's way over speed for a keyboard, but it's under speed for say like a web server. So don't, don't think you're gonna be like turning your keyboard into a standalone Apache web server. That's, that's probably not gonna happen. But if you guys could prove me wrong, please do. Also, I never got used to typing on these as a keyboard. It was a fun exercise, but being able to remember the layer key in combination with the other key to get the full coverage of the keyboard for all the characters, the function keys and everything like that, even though the functionality was there, I had trouble finding it. But what I really like about this keyboard is because it's a grid layout, you can think of it as just a macro board. 
I can actually go in and program this thing for Adobe Premiere, and that's what I'm working on right now, is creating a custom key map so that I can use this for all my editing in Premiere. You can also map keys to mouse movement. So if you guys wanna move the mouse with the keyboard, you can also do that. But the fact that I can make this macro anything, I can program everything down to milliseconds of how I want a macro played out, and I can program that in code. I can also do other really cool things like key combinations to play music. They have a firmware right now that you can deploy to the device where you hold down a key and you push buttons and it plays music. Here, I'll show you guys right now. Now, like I said, I don't think these keyboards are for everybody. They are a very, very nerd-centric item because it is an ortholinear keyboard. You are gonna have to learn how to type slightly different. And you're gonna have to learn how to memorize key locations and things like that, unless you get a custom keycap set. Now, the keyboards do come programmed with the TMK firmware, I believe. It might actually have had the QMK. I didn't remember before I flashed it. But either way, the keyboard comes with a default layout that you can switch between conventional and Dvorak. And the layers are there so that you can access all the keys. And I will also include a link to a PDF document that has that generic key layout in it. But I'll tell you right now, what made these things cool for me was the ability to set up a build environment, alter the firmware, build the firmware, and deploy it to the keyboard and make the keyboard truly unique in my own. And honestly, anybody that buys this keyboard, if you are not playing with the firmware and deploying custom firmwares, this thing, you are not realizing the potential. So please, please go out and check the GitHub links and get involved in that project. Because not only does this keyboard something cool that I'm gonna use as a macro keyboard for my applications, but it actually rekindled my romance for native code development. I'm a hardcore C-sharp managed code developer, but the C and C++ just started rushing back into my blood as I was playing around in the command line with the make files and the C files and the header files. And it's strange, but I'm gonna attribute this keyboard to actually getting me back into native code development. And I think that that is absolutely a huge thing. So guys, please let me know what you do with your Plank or Prionic keyboards. I would love to know what kind of firmware hacks you do, what kind of key map files you created. Please let me know down in the comments or come over and tweet me. I am at Barnacles. This is something that I'm actually pretty heavily invested in now, uh, especially since I've written a ton of code for it over the last couple of days. And if you guys would like to see a codegasm on what I've come up with, just let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. It helps a lot. It lets me know what type of videos you guys like and what type of videos you don't like. I have a feeling most of you guys are gonna like this video because come on, it's a fully metal keyboard. You build yourself and you program to do whatever you want. If you want the damn thing to be a stopwatch, it can be a stopwatch. All right guys, there you have it. My review of the OLKB Plank keyboard kit and the Prionic keyboard kit available right now on massdrop.com. And if you missed the drop for whatever reason, don't worry, I'm sure there will be a another one and all of those links are in the video description just expand that little thing down there yeah it's like a little expansion button just push that and it like a huge thing of text will come blowing out of your face damn it these are nerdy all right guys till next time you could stand on this thing you could beat somebody to death with this thing i don't recommend you beat somebody to death with this thing but if it's a life-threatening situation and your local laws allow you to beat somebody to death with this thing to save your own life, then I'm just saying you probably could. Seriously though, don't, I don't want to see this in the news. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.